distinguished guests, boys and girls, please give a very warm welcome to the right wonderful Lord Mayor Portman. And that's the start of a fishing event. Have you ever seen anything quite like it? You know, we've got five days ahead of us of something really special. This is going to be incredible. The Sea Angling Classic has been launched here in Portsmouth, and I reckon you better hold on tight. So that incredible march through the streets of Portsmouth took place yesterday. This is day two of the event, and at last, we're out on the water. We're on a boat called True Blue, which is gonna be our home for the next couple of days. And you can probably see over my left shoulder, Gun Wharf Keys disappearing into the background because today is the chance to see the boats out on the water for the first time for the boat parade. But before all of this happened, earlier on, we had the captain's meeting when a very important safety briefing was given by the Queen's Harbour Master. So I think, I believe I've got the smallest boat in the competition, Debbie Ann, she's a 15 foot sea hulk hunter, um, fully loaded to be honest with you. Um, so myself and Darren tomorrow, um, obviously it's a, it'll probably be the fastest boat as well, so we'll be out there um, anchored up where everybody else is wanting to get to. Practice has gone really well, but now I'm thinking I've got to remember that tomorrow we've just got to roll with the conditions, what we find, people on our marks, so it's got to calm down a bit now. We've probably done about 60, 70 hours, I'd imagine, of fishing. And obviously the prizes at stake are phenomenal. Yeah. They would mean an awful lot to anybody. Yeah. To be the first person to win it properly, I know you were at the kind of launch event last year, but what would that mean to you guys? Well, it would probably mean a trip to Vegas with three very happy anglers, I would have thought. Yeah, that's what it would mean to us. <laughs> uh, the pressure's on, I guess, Andy. But to be honest with you, having a look at the map that they've given us to fish inside, a lot of the local knowledge has been taken out of it by the mile from shore and the squeezed area. So I think it's pretty fair even for the uh, people travelling. Well, I fished it last year in the inaugural event and this year it's just a different competition. Much more organised, huge, um, really, really good. I'm very lucky I've got my boys with me, so they're fishing it with me. So, yeah, brilliant. Very, very well organised, you know, you know, and a great place, isn't it, Portsmouth? Portsmouth, brilliant. Lovely venue, really is. Now, of course, the one thing we have to talk about here is there's quite a lot of money at stake, a very big prize boat. You know, this is a, turning into a very special competition. How are the nerves, people? Do you know what? I think you either know how to catch fish and know what to do, or you don't. So I think the nerves... It's, for me, being the skipper of the boat, or the captain as they call it nowadays, um, I've got to make all the right calls because my three mates on my boat are going to blame me if we don't. They know how to catch fish, I've just got to put them on it. So the pressure's on me to put them on the marks, really. <laughs> Sleepless night tonight then? Well, no, I doubt it. We're having a few beers. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, not really nervous to be honest. We, we fish local to it and it, it's, it's not just about the prize, is it? Yeah, if everyone wants it, we'd love to have the boat. You know, it's a huge prize, but just go out and fish, don't you, and have fun and enjoy meet, meet people, enjoy you it. know, meet like-minded people. Yeah. So let's talk about those prizes for a moment, shall we? First of all, the winners of the event get to choose between this incredible Game King 745, fully loaded and worth in the region of £120,000 or £50,000 in cash. 
The boat's very special, made by a very special company. So how did it all come about? Uh, it was originally concepted oh, a year and a half, two years ago when Ross contacted me. He needed obviously a boat manufacturer, boat partner as a sponsor. And, you know, in terms of what we do and our ethos, we're now one of the world's leading sport fishing boat manufacturers out of aluminium, of course. Um, it was something that we sort of got together a year and a half ago and we really want to introduce our culture into the UK and what we do via sport fishing everywhere else around the world and you know Ross has done a fantastic job here as you can see everybody and how the turnout is and obviously uh, the weekend itself has been absolutely fantastic. In terms of obviously sustainability is a very important factor in, uh, in what we do. Um, we produce, we're one of the unique manufacturers in, Aus in the Australasian market where we produce, um, our boats are produced from carbon fibre, fibreglass, GRP, the typical boat shipbuilding methods. We're, we're produced out of all aluminium. Aluminium is obviously a very sustainable material. It's eminently recyclable and holds a value. Unfortunately, GRP and maybe the older methods of um, boat production, you know, they, they don't have sort of in terms of obviously sustain sustainability in terms of their disposal. Obviously you're into lechets, you're into um, resins, that sort of stuff, so it, it's complicated. So in terms of sustainability, I mean, that's one of our core ethos is as a company, as a business, manufacturing from aluminium. We all want to be here in 20 years and we all want to look after the world and obviously anything we can do to protect it. In the marine world in particular, obviously we all know in terms of the level uh, shipping is ramping up and what it's doing to our oceans and everything else so I think we all need to, at some point to have an accountability and you know do what we can. So much options out there in terms of what you can do I mean in terms of go down to your local tackle stores get some advice you know if you want to obviously see hanging's a different store you need a vessel um, you know anything from a three meter sib a little rib that you can buy yourself um, all the way up to you know one of these things here um, again it's predominantly budget related but yeah, I mean, follow some advice, get involved in the fishing clubs. There's fishing clubs springing up all over the country. There's some very well-established ones now. And, you know, um, there's a lot of avenues. The main thing is just obviously build up the product, build up the knowledge and do it safely in a safe way and in a safe environment. Enjoy is the most important thing. Good. So that's the boat covered, but what about the trophy? Tapping into some of the greatest traditions of maritime engineering, two companies local to the Sea Angling Classics host city, Portsmouth, Got together to create something rather special. As the planning stages for the event reached their peak, Ross Honey got the chance to see what all the fuss had been about. Wow, wow, that is truly amazing. Guys, thank you ever so much, each and every one of you. I know, I, wow, I knew that was gonna be good, but that's just, it's just amazing. That is, that is incredible. Um, so we've got stainless steel from the aircraft carrier. Um, all the stainless was from the aircraft carrier. The, um, the wood was from the victory, wasn't it, Conroy? Well guys, congratulations. This is one of the most stunning trophies I think I've ever seen for a sporting event. It's just amazing. It's just so clever. It's a bit of history now. It's going to be out there for ages and it looks amazing as well. I don't know, everyone's done a really good job. This section of wood there, that's yeah. actually from the Victory as well. So the, the guys have machined that in. And these little copper pieces there, they're all pieces of the, the Victory made as well from that piece of copper that we had. How many people have been involved in making this? <laughs> Behind the scenes, it's been it's, yeah, it's, it's been 50, 60 people working on that round. That's easy. I've Which never seen great. anything like it. And great, certainly, yeah. knowing that the history of all the little bits is the detail. Oh, yeah, is that's incredible. right. Yeah, yeah. So we've got bits of HMS Victory. We've Victory. got bits of one of the most modern warships oh. out there. Oh, yeah. 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 They got Middleton and Middleton. Yeah, yeah. Middleton. Yeah. Both. So that's off yeah. HMS Middleton. So made from recycled material. 
it's a, yeah. It does take your breath away. Yeah, it's, it's uh, certainly got, got some wow factor on that. <laughs> Now, my co-commentator this weekend is this man here, Steve Porter, who is in charge of this fantastic boat, which is taking us out onto the start line uh, for the opening parade. And I thought I ought to introduce you to him. Um, Steve, thank you very much for hosting us for a start. Um, how are you feeling ahead of this event? Well, I'm quite excited, actually, Andy, to be honest. Um, I've never seen a competition of this size in the UK, and I'm led to believe this is the start of bigger things. If this is a success, then it's going to go onwards and upwards in future years and uh, any angler who hasn't come and entered this competition are missing out on a lot I think. We've got uh, beautiful flat sea certainly for tomorrow and the sun. I think the fish is going to be fantastic. The big question is how good is the catching going to be? Hopefully we're going to see plenty of bream, tope, um, rays, smooth hounds, um, anything goes really. It's going to be exciting few days. I did chat to Adam Kirby who's one of my favourites for the, for the event who said he and his crew have practiced for 60 hours this week alone. That doesn't surprise me at all. I was speaking to a crew earlier and they're adamant that they're going to win. So there are some people yeah, taking it very, very seriously and uh, good luck to all of them. Well, that all happens tomorrow. Today, we've got the launch event with a fantastic boat parade going back into Portsmouth. We'll catch up with Steve tomorrow. For now, let's see what these boats can do. Ross, this event is so much more than just about fishing. Can you explain why? Well, the thing is, with this particular event, as you correctly say, Andy, it's so much more than, than just a fishy event. I mean, it involves like young children with uh, an educational process to make sure about safety on the water, respect for the environment, catch, photograph and release. And then on top of that, also linking in some of the things we're doing, all the data that's being, uh, being provided through the photographs that are taken during the event by the competitors, that's actually being used by Portsmouth University for a profound scientific study uh, for, for different things that are going on in the waters of the Solon. One of the other things I love about this is that all the competitors taking part have to sign up to do a beach clean. You know, this is a fantastic initiative. Yeah, that's one of the legacy things that we're actually creating with the Sea Angling Classic. Every single angler that competes uh, will have to do a shoreline cleanup and indeed have done that. Uh, and that's something that we're running consistently now through all our events, not just this one. And What's, what's been very interesting to see there is initially, well, well what's that all about, or a mumble grumble, but actually when the anglers have gone out and they've taken their children or families out, they've really got into it and they're really proud about how much the rubbish they've cleaned up and, and to, to leave the beaches and the environments that we're fishing in clean and tidy, it makes such a difference and uh, you know that in itself is a great legacy that uh, we're looking to, to have with this event. Looking at the prize boat, which is very special, there's also the option of £50,000 in cash. However, the trophy, the trophies in fact, are also extremely special. The other thing I love about that, the use of apprentices to create the trophies, a traditional way to make sports trophies, those things are incredible. The fact they're actually made out of the artefacts of uh, Nelson's flagship HMS Victory, then the, the aircraft carrier Prince of Wales, and, uh, and also on top of that the minesweeper uh, HMS Middleton, to see how the apprentices of Portsmouth have shown their skills and talents to actually make these, they're truly works of art, they really are. I think the prizes have really upped the ante a lot of competition out there today. Uh, we're excited to get out there, but yeah, the pressure feels a lot more this year. What would it mean to you and your crew to win this? Oh, it means everything to us to go out and win it. Obviously, we have got a nice boat there, but I think everyone's talking about taking the uh, second option. <laughs> <laughs> now then, the engines on Bad Boy are running. Where are you going? I don't even think we're sure yet. We've got a couple of spots, but the tides have been running hard, so um, I think we're going to just go out and have a look and then decide literally at the last minute. It's that crucial. Wow. Um, chances today then, what are we going to see? Everything. We're winning. 
<laughs> I love your optimism. You've got to be confident we wouldn't be here otherwise. It's going to be an epic event, to be fair. You know, it's, he's got it really well organised here. Atmosphere's brilliant, really, really buzzing. A lot of boats, nicely split this year into the charter category and the recreation. Makes you give a little bit more confidence to your average angler like myself. We're not competing against the charter skippers that know the waters inside out, that literally live on these waters. So, yeah, it gives us, gives us a little bit of hope, Andy. One word about the weather. Hot. <laughs> so we're underway the engines on true blue are home for the next two days they're roaring and so are the engines on all the boats taking part in this amazing competition now it looks to me as if loads of these boats are heading off to a location called the boulder bank there are lots of fish there particularly taupe so we're going to follow them out there, see what goes on and see if we can find out who's catching fish in the early stages of the 2022 Sea Angling Classic. So there's boat 33, Paintball, one of the recreational boats. We're out at Boulder Bank and great signs they've already clearly got a fish on. Now we can't quite tell from this distance what it is yet, but I can tell you that quite a few fish have already been caught. We've only been going, well, less than an hour. Um, and just to show you how great a fishing water the Solon is, it just really is going quite well. So let's just have a little look through some of the fish that have been caught in the first early stages of this match. Boat number six, this is William Baines on Sure Thing with a fantastic smooth hound. Mark Bryant on Jacoby with a bream. That's a fish about 28 centimetres long. Now the routine here will be to try and get bigger fish as you go and obviously um, the longer the fish the more chance you have of winning competition but the indications are that there are fish feeding quite heavily, quite fast, out here in the Solent at the moment. Just going through the list of fish catches, and there are some seriously decent smooth hound coming along. Chris Hawkins with a 100 centimetre smoothie on boat number eight. Some taupe also being caught. John Challoner, who we spoke to yesterday on boat number 14, with an 84 centimetre taupe. Lots and lots of bream coming out in the list. Jason Gillespie, boat number 26, another taupe of about 80 centimetres, smaller fish. We know the taupe get a lot bigger than the smoothies, so if we're seeing smooth hound that are a metre long and taupe that are a bit smaller, then that shows you that the big taupe are not feeding quite yet. But there have been an awful lot of fish caught in the lead up to this event. Now this is also interesting, boat number 35, Luke McKell, a fantastic smooth hound, 97 centimetres long. That is a serious fish. So there is boat number 35, Squidward, and they've had a cracking morning so far. Luke McKell has already had one fish, but we're just watching the official measuring process. So, as we've mentioned, this is a catch and release competition. In fact, catch, photograph and release. So, go through the process of measuring carefully all of the fish, nose to tail, on the official measuring board. The photograph is taken before the fish is safely released back into the Solent. Really important to rest these fish before they go back in. Um, so they swim away strongly they really do recover very well, the shark species like taupe and smoothies, keeping everything nice and cool and a bit of shade on the deck. It's hot out here today, potentially the temperature getting up to around 30 degrees, so it's absolutely vital this process is done very carefully. The official photograph being taken, and any moment now we'll see this fish go back in. That looks like a smooth hand to me. What a fantastic capture, little smoothie. And here it is going safely back into the Solent. Wonderful stuff. There it goes back. A couple of fish on their boat already this morning, so they'll be making progress up the leaderboard and a nice little wave for the camera. Fantastic skills. 
So one of the early contenders, boat number 11, Jason Williams' boat, Avon Hurst. And they've had three smooth hounds and three breams. So things going pretty well for them. This is all about maximizing the time when the interesting species will feed. And I'm sensing that the boats that get it right in the early stages of this match will be the ones that become contenders because there are fish out here that are easy to catch or easier to catch and fish that are more difficult depending on states of tides and things like that. And it's the, the anglers who suss out, for example, when the best time to catch a tope is who will score fastest in this competition. And anglers like boat 37, which is Bill Arnold and Ray Plummer's boat, they've already had a tope and very few of the rest of the boats out here we've seen tope. There's been a couple of smaller ones, but nothing the size of the fish that Ray's had on boat 37. You know, they may start to get an edge because it may be that the bream, I'm not gonna say are easier to catch, but they're certainly potentially easier to catch than the big tope, potentially the bass, and potentially some of those ray species. So very interesting to see which species people start to go for. And I think that's part of the reason why so many boats are here at the Boulder Bank, because multi-species here, there's a chance to catch pretty much everything. So really interesting to see how this next bit of the match progresses. Well, we've come out of Portsmouth this morning and uh, we've come down to the southeast, um, not far from Selsey Bill really, and we're fishing a mark known as the Boulder Bank. Um, this isn't my area, but I'm led to believe this is a good mark for general mixed fishing. And all five of the target species could, can be caught here. Conceivably, we've seen an amazing amount of fish already caught, which is, is mind-blowing, actually. I, I was, you know, with, with these competitions, there's always that sort of fear, oh, how's it gonna start? But I'll tell you what's been interesting, a lot of bream have been caught. Well, it is bream season. I think most of the ones we've seen so far are around about 28, 30 centimeters. So the other species, of course, we're looking at the shark species, the rays, uh, the smooth hounds, and the tope. We found one really nice big tope caught, which is like a meter and a half long, uh, which is a seriously big fish. But interestingly for me, it looks like some of the smooth hounds that have been caught are serious fish. We're talking meter long smoothies. That, that's pretty good stuff, isn't it? Well, for me, that's an amazing fish. Um, smooth hounds aren't very common down in pool, and when we get them, they're nowhere near that size, or very rarely. So I'm very impressed to see so many smoothies landed and recorded, plus of 90 centimeters at the moment. So yeah, like I say, great start to the day. Well, we're on spring ties at the moment, and we're on what I call the first day of the cutback. So yesterday was the biggest tide in this particular set of spring tides, and today it's just starting to ease back. And certainly where I bass fish, that's normally the best day. And I would expect it to be similar here. Um, we're currently fishing the flood tide that started about eight o'clock this morning. So midway through this run of tides, between sort of 10 and midday, is when it's gonna be running at its hardest. And if there's gonna be any bass uh, concentrating on some fast flowing water it's going to be about then and it may be that some of the boats then go and concentrate on the bass fishing for that small period because the tide tomorrow is smaller still and I think today is the best chance of a bass. And that's interesting for me because I know last year when we had the the sort of inaugural event the bass were one of those species that people really really struggled to find and I know there are so many bass in the Solent, so it was just a little bit odd. Obviously, the tides didn't work as well then, so it's interesting you say that, and it'd be fascinating to see if anybody does get into some bass today. Bass can show up anywhere. Um, they're not necessarily on a mark where the water's running fast, so some of the guys may decide just to stay at anchor all day and hope they get a bass as a, as a bycatch, if you like, because, of course, moving from their anchored position now to go and find the bass is steaming time. And when you're steaming, you've not got lines in the water. So it's, it's a balance really of whether you want to keep your lines in the water fishing or take up some of the valuable time to move from one mark to another. There's one of the charter boats involved in the competition, uh, but that one is rather special. That's Wet Wheels, which is a boat designed for the use of disabled anglers in wheelchairs. And they've got a smooth hand on board. 
We'll get them to hold it up for the camera in a second as it's released. A little process going through here. Just goes to show this competition is actually, yes, it is a competition, but it's about so much more than just angling. So there's the smoothie going back. Dove O'Donnell, the angler who caught it. Fantastic achievement. And that fish for Dave was just under a metre. What a brilliant capture. So Steve, we've seen a lot of fish being caught. And one of the things that, um, that you've been interested to watch is the, the conservation side of things out in this competition, particularly the measuring process. W what's interested you so much? I am very impressed with the conservation measures that have been put in place with this event. The organisers have gone to great length. And most competitions these days are catch and release because anglers essentially are conservation-minded people. Nobody wants to hurt these fish. But in a measuring process, fish can inadvertently be killed just by the fact they're laid on a deck. And in conditions like today, decks are very hot. You put a fish on this deck, and with the best will in the world, it's probably not going to survive. But the organisers for this competition haven't just provided measuring sticks, they've provided a measuring mat. And it's a cool surface that you can roll out when you've got a fish. It's not being exposed to the sun like the deck is. It comes out, it can be wet. So the fish are being placed on a cold surface, measured accurately, and pretty much ensuring it's going to survive. The other thing, of course, is that the data collected from the fish captures is being used to kind of monitor the health of the fish stocks in this fantastic piece of water, which again goes towards the conservation side of things. Absolutely, and I understand um, Portsmouth University are also involved in this event, and all the data is being collected and transferred to them. So. Great for research as well as conservation, this competition. Well, every fish that's caught in this competition is welcome. There's the eponymous Solent dogfish, Bex Florence, who's the only female charter boat skipper out here on Kelly's Hero 3, <laughs> giving us a demo of the bait stuff. Back goes the doggy. Dogfish is, of course, a member of the shark family as well, but not quite as welcome as some of the others. But isn't it great to see a female charter boat skipper in amongst all the blokes? telling people what to do, Steve. She seems like she's completely in charge over that. Oh, she is. she's an outstanding skipper. She's get, got such a reputation all across the South Coast. And, uh, you know, she's competing in a man's world. I mean, I've got loads of respect for her. A lovely girl. Bad boys, fish on, and I think possibly Luke Fitzgerald is struggling with a snag, but the angler to his right looks like he is indeed playing a fish. Let's just have a little look round there. Is there a fish in that big clump of weed? That's the question. Loads of weed coming past the boat with that tide running really fast. Just looks like weed to me. Frustrating times. However, activity on the right hand side of the boat and a landing net in hand. I know how passionately and desperately these guys want to do well in this competition because they are local anglers, they do know these waters very well. Look at the concentration levels. Brilliant stuff. Starting to see lines in the water, we'll start to see some shapes under the surface in a second I hope. Just said Luke say teamwork makes the dream work. Here we go look, here we go, what have we got? Now that looks like a smooth hound to me. It's either a smoothie or a small tope. I'm guessing a smoothie. Great stuff. Oh, aborted landing. Just managed to look at the, all the leaders tangled up as it goes in the net. Again, a problem with fishing in so much tide. But there is a smoothie. And there's Nicky with a, looks like a big piece of mackerel on the end and a cast off the back of the boat, not too far just enough to get it away. It looks like there's another fish on on that uh, Rodman in the distance, can't quite see. A little bit too far away yet. Fish is being landed there by the look of it. Got no chance of telling you what that is, but you can see some splashing around the back of the boat in the distance. Fish being landed. In fact, that looked like a conga because it's gone straight back. Little conga eel, I think. Things are going pretty well here out on the Solent. 
There's another fish being landed over to my left. There are fish coming out all over the place. This is extraordinary. Well, there we have boat number 39 Extreme, and they're having a hell of a morning. Two fish as we just arrived to find the guys on 39 on Extreme. That is a smooth hound. Another one, and they are leading the event after a couple of hours fishing. An extraordinary day's work from them so far. Mark Quillam, Sam Quillam, Stu James and Captain Dave Wilson spoke to them before the start and they were optimistic that things would go well for them, having worked quite hard to work things out. And that's exactly what's happened. So far, they've had 343 centimetres of fish, mainly bream and smoothies, so no rays, bass or taupe so far. That may well come later on. You can see the amount of weed that's built up around the boat and that tells you that the tide is starting to slow down. It was racing through not that long ago. But all the activity on the boat as that fish is being measured. So it's Dave Wilson, the skipper, who caught that fish that's just being put back. And their plan is to stick around here for about another 10 minutes, potentially try and get something a little bit longer before heading off to try to find the other species. That fish is just disappearing across the surface, having a little cruise. And there it is, sat in the water. Wow, that's amazing. Just about 15 feet off the back of our boat, and there goes that smoothie. Kick of the tail up to the surface. Heading off towards the weed behind us. Swimming powerfully away. You see, this is why you have to understand that these are a shark species, you know, fin out of the water. You can see that that's a shark species, can't you? Because its fin came out of the water. They are such cool fish, the smooth hounds. And when you get hold of them, the amount of power in those fish is extraordinary. So these guys are going to spend potentially about another 10 minutes or so in this bit of water as the tide starts to slacken before they start to move away and start to look for some of the other species. Well, there is boat number 37, and that is Bill Arnold measuring a fish and Ray Plummer taking a photograph of it. They've had a decent start. They've had three of the five species required. And that is a little smoothie that Bill is just having his photo taken with. As I say, these guys know this water. Now, that one's going straight back, but they're going to fill up with the little ones first and then get the bigger ones later. But they have had a big taupe, and also Bill has had a ray bit more activity then on boat number 26. Out comes the measuring board. Now that, I can't quite tell, but it looks like it's a smooth hound. Could be a taupe, you know. Jason and David just getting into the action. Amazing that they've caught at this state of tide, Steve, because, you know, we were just saying a few minutes ago, this really is the doldrums now when nothing's really moving an awful lot. That's a real bonus fish. Yeah, any fish that comes up a slack water, I think it's got to be a bonus. Um, you'll always catch some, of course, but it's definitely the slow part of the day, so it's really nice to see. That is, in fact, a smooth hound. So they're just doing the do -si do to sort themselves out and get their photo taken. You've got to get the pictures right. If you don't get the pictures right, if you don't have your tag showing and all that sort of stuff, you know, there is a fair amount of admin to do here, which sometimes, let's be honest, anglers are not fantastic at admin, are they? No, and their priority when they're in, in amongst some fish is to get that line back in the water and they might uh, skimp the important bit, which is measuring the fish properly and doing a good photograph. Certainly last year, I understand some of the fish were disqualified simply because they were photographed on the wrong side. And the rules are quite specific. The fish has to be laid on its right side and uh, fish that are photographed laying on their left side are disqualified. And the reason for that is, as of, of course, is that it rules out an angler using the same fish twice. That looks like a good smoothie. Look at that, it's a cracker. Yep, that's a very nice fish. I can sense your jealousy. If you don't have those down at Paul, you know, I can understand. Uh, very rare. We do get them occasionally, but very rare. But you see, you, see, you can't have every, because your bass fishing down there is fantastic, isn't it? We do have some good bass fishing on, on its day, yeah, for sure. But then we do come down towards the white for the best of it, but of course we're on the, the western side of the Isle of Wight. Look, you can't come down and poach all the Solent waters all the way down. It's just not cricket. Now, let's have a look. David Mordecai's got a nice firm hold of this fish. Back it goes. What do you reckon? That's a metre fish. Look at it go. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Of course, at this stage of the competition, 
a lot of fish aren't even being measured because if an angler's already caught three nice fish, anything that comes in under the size is already caught, just going to be released. So although we're seeing loads of fish being reported on the app, in actual fact, there's far more being caught. Yeah, we're well over 200 that have been measured, so there could be probably double that, um, which is extraordinary. The lead has changed hands in this match four times already today, and we're looking at boat number 26, Jason Gillespie, David Mordecai, who have had an epic last hour or so. They've had a really good run of things, and actually, they're just cleaning the boat down because they've just had a flatfish. I think it might be a thornback ray. We'll just get a little glimpse of it. And it's rays that are potentially going to cause problems for some of the anglers. So scoring in a... Huh? Yeah. So it's rays at this state of tide where the water starts to go slack. It stops flowing. I mean, it has been like a raging river out here in the last hour or so, and things are now slackening off. You can see some activity there on the boat with the measuring gauge just being put away. As Steve said earlier on, storing it away from the heat of the sun, keeping it nice and cool. Oh yes, a little toast from the boat. The skull and crossbones. And plenty of activity because I think these guys realise they know it's at stake. Now that's interesting because that's come back without a bait on it. And often the case where these rays, sometimes you'll get a little tap and they're very sneaky down on the bottom, flatfish, so they live, you know, tight to the bottom. They can nick your bait and disappear. And it's one of those where you wait for the, the bite to develop sometimes and then just leave it perhaps a little bit too long and they nick your bait. So I get the feeling that be, might be what's happened there. So there's David Mordecai with Thornback Ray carefully put back into the water. Beautifully done. And it disappears off. Great stuff. Well done, fellas. Keep up the good work, I reckon. Yes. You know, the lead in this event keeps on changing hands and at the moment there's only 18 centimetres between the boat in first place and the boat in second. The leaders at the moment are blue with Jason Gillespie and David Mordecai, but the guys aren't bad boys. Those guys with the local knowledge who fish these waters all the time are coming right back into this competition. They've had loads and loads of fish and it's gone really, really well for them. Some big topers starting to come into the action now. Also, one or two rays. So this competition is going all the way to the wire on day one. So Steve, there's boat 34. All different shapes and sizes of boats in this competition. That's Hot Pursuit with Adam Kirby and Dan Sissons on board. They've had seven fish. Do you know, I know the amount of work they've put in to this event. These are the guys that I was telling you earlier on had fished for kind of 60 hours in practice. Adam was worried yesterday they'd actually probably practiced a little bit too much. I suppose that can happen, can't it? No, but you really? can't. We've been practicing fishing ever since we got our first rod out as kids or whatever age we started. What you can't practice for is the conditions on the day because they're unknown. We don't know what we're going to be presented with on a day but you can't get enough practice I don't is my opinion you can't over practice what's the situation because you obviously there's tide running so if you're sticking bait in the water when there's a load of tide running surely you're that's counterproductive uh, well certainly when the tide's running your baits are sending a scent down tide to attract the fish if you put a dropper down you've got to release it on the seabed and if the tide is running as such or the seabed's flat that that tide will take that ground bait away from you, you, you could effectively be taking fish away from the boat. So there's a key time to put it down. And if you remember earlier on, we were by boat number 26 uh, during the slack water, which is normally a, a slow period for fishing. He was chumming up, dropping bait down, and that was gonna go nowhere other than stay under his boat. And that's probably the reason why he was able to bring two rays in during what would have normally been a very slow period.
Well, this is boat 14 tequila, and with 40 minutes left of the match, I can tell you that these guys are leading the whole event at the moment. I'm not sure they know that, and at the moment, I'm not going to tell them because I don't want them to lose their concentration. But on board, we have John Challoner, Kelvin Hindmarch, and the two lads, Joe and Toby Challoner, 11 and 14 years old, and they have had a hell of a day. 640 centimetres. They've had Ray, they've had Bream, they've had smoothies, and they've had taupe. The only species they haven't caught, Steve, is bass. There's still time, I suppose, 40 minutes left, but I tell you what it blows you away. There's a boat with a couple of kids on it, and they're obviously decent anglers. You can see that by looking at them, but you know, all these sponsored boats out here and all these superstar anglers, and these guys are leading. Isn't it brilliant? I think it's amazing, and it just goes to show how all-encompassing fishing is. We've got a couple of youngsters here that are showing the professionals how it's done. I think it would be mind-blowing if they came off the water today, you know, leading this whole field. Now, we've got half an hour left. The competition finishes at four, and then the guys have got an hour and a half to steam back. How far back are we? How far away from... Gun Wharf now, Steve? We're about uh, 10 miles from Portsmouth at the moment. Looks like we've got a fish on here, look. Possibly um, two. But, uh, one of the youngsters has got a nice bent could, rod there. Could be weed. Certainly one fish on. Yeah, it looks like weed. Uh, I think he's in the bottom, actually. We're in the bottom. So, yeah, I mean, how exciting would this be if it was a bass? Rob well, tip shaking. Be very, very lucky, but you couldn't rule a bass out no. anywhere, really. I always think they're one of the most widespread fish in the channel, from the deepest wrecks to well up into rivers sometimes. Yeah, also, they're opportunist feeders, aren't they? You know, they'll go where the... Oh, hello, that's a bream, look. That is a bream, so that's one of the species they need. That's interesting. And it looks like there's another bite on one of the other rods too. Well, here's a fish coming in. Is it of any use to us? Now then, no, small, it's not, it's a small. Small conger. Well, that's a shame. It's one of the species that doesn't count. And I'll tell you what's a shame, because if it's a competition based on length, the conger eel's quite a decent thing to get, isn't it? But not easy to measure. Well, Steve, here we see right in front of us the younger of the two boys, Challoner Junior Junior, is into a fish. Now, this looks breamy. Is this breamy? I think it's bream. There you go. Rod tip recognition there, Andy, I think. Good, good knowledge. Good nodding of the rod tip. I love catching, they're great fun, aren't they, as well? A really great species to target, really they're good fun They're an amazing fish, because when you get amongst them, everybody can catch them, but the good anglers can catch lots. They are a skill fish, but the occasional one is easy. Well, there's a proud moment. Not big enough to measure, unfortunately. Back it goes. They are a bit spiky. Fantastic stuff. One of the other interesting things about this, Steve, is, is bait selection. You know, you've got five species to, to get today. So, you know, when you're fishing for things like taupe and stuff, like, I mean, I'm assuming you're going for mackerel, but what, what are people using? Well, certainly mackerel is probably universally the best bait to use out in the sea. It's going to attract the taupe for sure and the rays. Um, occasionally a smooth hand, although smooth hand, you're going to be a, a little bit more specific and use crab if you're dedicatedly char targeting smooth hounds you're going to use crab. Um, bream is going to be traditionally squids, uh, strips of squid um, but yeah mack mackerel certainly for the for the taupe. And I suppose that's the thing with it isn't it that the predatory fish those kind of shark species the rays and the smoothies and the taupe 
of following the shoals of mackerel, which is why I suppose all anglers become obsessed with are the mackerel in yet. You know, it's, it's the, the phrase that you hear so often early in the season when the things start to warm up and those shoals start to arrive. Yeah, it's certainly true that uh, anglers think uh, the predatory fish are following the mackerel. I'm not always convinced that's the case. Certainly in recent years where our mackerel stocks down the south here have diminished somewhat. Um, but the good thing about mackerel as a bait, when you, when you take a fillet off the side, that scent, that all that oil travels down tide and you're bringing the fish to you. They're picking up on that scent. So I think that's the reason why mackerel is a, is a, is a good bait for fish like rays and taupe. They pick it up on the scent and coming in. And the bream, uh, you were talking about little strips of squid. Also in the, the waters, as they've warmed up around our coastlines the last few years, the squid, there's been an awful lot more of them too, haven't there? Absolutely, yeah. And, and now you'll get anglers booking a boat just to go and catch squid because the cost of squid as a bait is very expensive now. And so it's cost effective for an angler to book a boat just to go squid fishing, to stock up his freezer, particularly for the winter fishing, which is primarily all we use is squid for the whiting and the cod. You know, one of the most extraordinary things about this event is it's going to come down to the merest of margins, I fancy. And we're looking now at young Joseph Challoner measuring a smooth hound, which could really put boat 14 tequila into a very strong position in this competition. Now, if I tell you that more than 400 odd fish have been registered throughout the competition, and it's looking as though the gap between first place and second could be, Steve, as little as 40 centimetres. That's amazing. It is phenomenal. It is phenomenal, really. Uh, but what I find amazing is the boat we're looking at now, currently out in front, two young lads. Um, we've been here watching them now for 15, 20 minutes, and there's been a steady stream of fish. We've seen four different species landed, and it's not luck that, that why that is happening. I mean, I'm looking at my chart plotter, and there's been some great skill by the skipper to anchor that boat where it is. Right behind the boat, he's got a feature, and all those lines are running up to that feature, which is clearly holding a lot of fish. There's little edges like that in a competition like this, out here in the middle of the Solent, you know, people who know what they're doing, who know where to find these marks. It's why skippers, you know, so jealously guard the, the places they know fish are holding, isn't it? It is, and also it's a, it's a great skill to be able to anchor accurately and uh, the, sk the skipper of this boat's done a great job. But it's, that, that's not the end of the story though, it, one, the boat's got to be anchored correctly but then you need the anglers, they've got the skill, technique and knowledge to be able to get the fish up to the boat. Well it looks like they're starting to pack up so match finishes in honestly two minutes time. Uh, they've had a hell of a day these people. A hell of a day and the fact they've got two like we said earlier on two young lads on board obviously they're very very good anglers i just think it's fantastic it is amazing and and um for me it's the highlight of the day a highlight of a very good day to see two young lads doing so well well let's get back to gun wharf see what the scores on the doors actually are and see how this first day of the sea angling classic has ended and who is in command as the boats came home after day one, it was clear that fishing had been brilliant. A total of 533 fish were landed, photographed and safely returned to the Solent. In the charter boat category, the first two places came from the same boat. Stuart Newell and Pete Churchill were first. Their boat partners Steve Batchelor and Colin Searle were in second. David O'Donnell, a wheelchair angler, and his boat partner Medwin Jones from Wet Wheels were third. In the recreational boats, the Challoner family and Kelvin Hindmarch led the way, with 707 centimetres of fish caught on tequila. Paintball were second, with CJ and Bad Boys in third and fourth. So we've reached the halfway stage in this extraordinary competition. Here's what's coming up next time.